Welcome back, everyone, to the Daedalus Encounter. And actually, it's going to be the final part of the Daedalus Encounter. We remember last time our characters, Ari and Zack, realized that they had explored all of the rooms. They had seen everything in the ship, and there was no indication of anything that they could use to control the ship or use to get their ship dislodged from the Daedalus. It's not going to be too long before the Daedalus flies right into a star, so we don't have much time left. Zack has given up hope, and Ari finally has given up hope herself. All that's left is Casey to fly around the ship to see if there's anything that we missed. This actually is the, uh, the free-roaming part of the game, where if we missed anything, we can go back now to the different sections of the ship and look around if we wanted to. Fortunately, though, we've been finding all of the, uh, the rubber balls as we've been going along. If we had not find, if we uh, weren't finding them, we would have to go back and find out where those balls are. Does YouTube have a streaming limit, as in time-wise? I don't think so. I've seen multi-hour streams on YouTube, so I don't think that'll be a problem. Once again, despite what the title card said, this is a YouTube stream, not a hitbox stream. Anyway, let's continue on, and let's see if we can save ourselves. Can Casey do anything? Casey, the only actual, really, uh, uh, capable one of this entire group? Can, can we do anything? Well, we're in the central hub, and we're looking at all these doors. Is there a door that, that hides something that we still have to get? Well, since we've gotten all the rubber balls throughout the course of the game, what we can now do is go down to this yellow door. And since, by the way, we've unlocked all the doors, we've solved the puzzles, so fortunately, we can just... Oops. Shine some light, and we can just go right through. It doesn't make us actually do the puzzles again, fortunately. It's quiet and dark, all alone aboard the Daedalus. Ari and Zack, deep in despair, back in the, the ship hub, as we try to figure out something we can possibly do. I see the chat is deep in conversation about the nature of Casey. No, we still don't know if Casey was a, uh, a man or a woman. We still don't know if that was the case. Again, that's probably entirely intentional. It's to allow us, whoever you are, to just really get into the, into the brain box of Casey, the character. This is a room I think we have not seen before, but is there anything here that can help us? This is actually kind of a, uh, a tricky part of the game, because I said it's free roaming. There's, uh, really no in there's really no indication on where you're supposed to go, so really I guess the idea is to just spend your time exploring the ship, looking around, trying to figure out where you can go. There's actually nothing here, but that's just an example. We can go in this room, we can take a look at it, it's pretty, it's there, they rendered it, but there's nothing actually to do there. Casey pulling a barrel roll, because why not? We're about to die, right? Might as well see what kind of sweet tricks and flips our probe body can do. There's actually a number of paths that we could try. Like, we could go left and right right here. There'd still be nothing at the end of those paths. Let's just head on back. Or maybe we could maybe take a right right here. Why not? I don't think we've been through that door before. Maybe we should give it a try. Hmm. Well, doesn't seem like there's really anything in this red room. I guess we should probably turn around. Oh, hey, look at that. Well, 
Right, so as you explore the ship, this is one of the things that you'd be looking for. This thing hidden in the corner. We went through the yellow door to get here, so let's try that. Hmm, nothing. Let's try this, uh, these data patterns that we picked up. Let's try the yellow door data pattern. Do we have a time limit here? I don't think so. I haven't noticed one. Oh, hey! Another rubber ball. We might as well take it with us. Why not? We still don't know what they do. I guess let's go back to Zack and Ari. Give it to Zack. He's been carrying these around. Even though he's not sure why. And this, I believe, is the final rubber ball. We have found all of the super balls that the aliens kept around the ship for their kids to play with, I guess. We have the total set. Who knows what we might be able to get for that. Receptacles. Casey, you're a genius. No shit. Let's give it a shot. Oh. Hungry. Alright. You wanna try one? Sure, why not? slot on this thing? Last one. Want to do the honors, boss? Thanks. I think. Oh. Right, Casey, this was your idea. Now what? Indeed. Now what? Well, we were collecting these rubber balls, but we didn't actually know they'd do anything. But apparently they do, and no, we can't actually look at the thing that just came up. I guess we must be hovering over it. We can only look at the doors. So, if the aliens were going to be controlling this control panel, what, what would they do with it? Well, so far we've seen them use colored lights. But apparently I guess this isn't going to work because it's not actually letting us look at it. Is there anything else we've seen that we might be able to use to control an alien device? Casey thinks that Casey might know. It's disc three. 
Disc 3 is what we use to control the alien device. So I just have to go over here, get Disc 3, put that in the 3DO, and then surely that will help us save the day, get out of this ship, before we actually fall into the star. Alright, Disc 3 is in. Hopefully the secrets lie on there. It's coming any time now. All right, there, here we go. We're back on disc three. More dead aliens. This is a place we've been th uh, to before as well, though you might not remember what was at the end of the hall. And really, if you were playing the game, it's just all a matter of exploration of just, just flying around everywhere, just trying to figure out if there's anything around you can use or that you can pick up. How many discs? Velvet? It is four discs. We are at the end, though at the end, you do have video clips on different discs. I guess they were just trying to maximize their space. Not need a fifth disc. All right, we're back in the infirmary. You might remember when we were here, we cut up this alien with surgery lasers, and its hand fell off. Didn't it? Let's see, how do we get to there? Oh, hold on. I got the... The icon changed for a second. I thought it did. Oh, uh, 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 there. So Casey remembers quite clearly chopping off this alien hand with a laser. Let's take it as a souvenir, why not? Zack was quite disgusted with the hand. He didn't want anything to do with it, so he threw it on the floor. Let's just bring it back to him and remember the good times that we had cutting up an alien with a surgery laser. I guess at this point, Ari and Zack are just standing around that control panel trying to figure out what they could possibly do with it. And once again, what would they do without Casey and Casey's ability to shine colored lights? and pick up rubber balls, where no one knew there were rubber balls before. There'd be no way off the ship then. And yes, back to disc four. We had to go to disc three just for that one part, because I guess they couldn't fit that onto disc four. So, just changing back. All right. Oh, the days of limited storage space with video games. Limited storage space takes a variety of different ways. The traditional way, usually for cartridge games, was that they had to be very efficient with their sprites and backgrounds. On the, in the FMV era, sometimes you would have this kind of thing, though where you would have to reuse video clips, but you didn't have enough space on every disc to put that video clip. Oh, jeez, Casey! <laughs> Casey? Oh, man. What, what, are you a dog now? Barry? Get rid of it! We don't appreciate that, Zach. We worked hard to get that. Is this lying around somewhere? I mean, what's what's Zach doing? Just throwing it away? Okay, I can look down. This is our gift, and you're gonna accept it. You have to be gracious about this, Zach. <laughs> Let's go to disc one. <laughs> That was, I guess, whatever's happening next was just too much for Disc 4. I don't remember that much happening on Disc 4, though. Was there really that many video clips on there? 
Well, disc one didn't last all that long, so maybe there was extra space on there at the end. Any second now. Zach, just stay cool. Stay cool? Come on, it's gotta be 85 in here and rising. Oh, yes! You got a live one, Case. Go check him out. Harry, you see that? Yeah, could be our navigational console. Think this guy will mind if we hijack his ship? Let's see what Casey comes up with. He looks like he's studying some kind of readout. He's adjusting those light beams. What's that thing in the center? I don't know, Harry, but things are starting to heat up around here. Look, we gotta do something. We gotta do something now. Oh, shit, he sees us. Okay, I'm gonna have to pause it right there. And why? Well, I mentioned last time that we were gonna have a choice. A choice on how the Daedalus encounter would end. Because it can end multiple ways. And it's time for you to decide, what is your canon ending to the Daedalus encounter? Since we do have this YouTube stream lag, it'll be a little bit before you see this, so I'm just going to give it a little bit of time and explain this a little. You see, we're about to, uh, we're about to address this alien who's controlling the ship. There are some things we could do. Zack wants us to just shoot him. Ari, however, wants to communicate with him. So... How would we communicate with this alien? Well, if you remember last time, there was a, a part where we learned a whole bunch of symbols. These symbols. We haven't used them yet, but we have them in our databanks. And these symbols are perhaps something that the alien could understand. However, we won't have a whole lot of time to send symbols, so we would have to decide which one symbol we would want to send. And of course, you know, we would want it to be something the alien would be friendly to, obviously, because you don't want to send, a, send something to him that says that we're going to kill him, right? So this could be a problem. We're going to have to choose a symbol. So how do we do this? Well, I thought I would make the, the choosing process a little easier and just remove some of the symbols that don't actually do anything. So there we go. These symbols, the ones that are remaining here, actually do something. So I thought I would, I thought I would probably group them into what they do. Because it turns out that these symbols don't, have, don't each have an individual outcome, but multiple symbols will lead to the same outcome. As it turns out... There are only actually two outcomes that can be gotten with using a symbol. Let's why not just number them like that for some reason. So those four choices over on the left, if we picked one of them, we would get choice number one. If we picked one of the symbols in the middle, we would get choice number two. 
There's nothing under number three. That represents not communicating, doing nothing, taking Zack's advice to shoot the alien. So, this is our choice. Do we communicate one of the symbols on number one? Do we communicate one of the symbols on number two? Or do we not do anything? Chat. The way the Daedalus encounter ends is up to you. And you have to make this choice. You have to make it now. Even though you're not going to see that for a while. I hope that, uh... Yeah, I hope that kept that going long enough for you to get the explanation before I started the vote. It looks like you did. It looks like number two is skyrocketing. I wonder if that's because you're figuring that because there are a smaller amount of symbols that can lead to number two, that that must be the good outcome. Trying to do a little metagaming. I wonder if that'll work. It seems that you're saying that it's going to be number two. You sure? That just because there are less symbols that can lead to that one, that must mean it's the good one? All right. If that's what you have to say about it, I guess that's how we're going to go. Number one coming in second. Number three, not many people thinking we should follow Zach's advice. It's definitely the case. And of course, one person saying number four, one person saying that they want to resist destiny, carve out their own fate, but it's not going to work this time, Payne, because we're going with number two. Number two, one. So, let's, uh, let's communicate that symbol that looks like an alien on the ground, giving a ball to an alien above it. You see that one? It's yellow, green, blue over number two. I guess we're going to give that one. That seems like a good one to send. Let's see what happens. All right, go for the nav consoles. I'll cover you. Wait, Zach, don't shoot it. It's unarmed. we got to try and communicate. How? Come on, this thing isn't exactly happy to see us, Aerie. Casey, try to come... And that's the end, or at least that's the ending that you got, chat. Our canon ending. It seemed like a pretty happy ending. Everyone survived. Uh, the alien messiah was born. Uh, and we were able to go through the sun because of the alien force field, I guess. And that, that's it, I guess. I, I don't think there was really much of a moral or that we learned anything from this adventure, really. But, uh, yeah, we went into this sector of space in order to try to get some salvage, make some money. Uh, we crashed into the Daedalus. 
we went through the ship trying to figure out how to get off. We finally figured out how to get off, and that's it. And that's the ending that you got, chat. That's the one you chose. There are others. But first, maybe we should just go through all these credits. See all the people who worked so hard on the Daedalus Encounter. And you know, I actually did like the game. I am making fun of it, but, uh... I said when we started this that I wanted to try to play an example of a more seriously made FMV game. Sort of a, as a contrast to something like, uh, uh, Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. You know, a game that was, that was actually made trying to be a serious sci-fi story, and uh, I thought it was alright. Yes, Payne, I did accuse you out of my own prejudice. I'm sorry. I always assume that if any th anyone picks four, it's probably you. But yeah, I thought that this was I thought this was all right. Not the most exciting game. Uh, it is kind of slow. It is kind of quiet. But I think it does a lot right, especially when you could compare it to other FMV games of the time. This is pretty good. Yeah, that wailing guitar. The game apparently one's on Quick, quick Time for Windows 2.0, even though this is a 3DO game. Okay, so that's it for the Daedalus Encounter. But I did say there were other endings. Let's take a look at them, why not? Okay. So... What order should we watch these in? Well, we saw the ending where we pick number two. Perhaps, let me see. Let's, uh, let's take a look at an ending if we picked number one. Oh, uh, yeah, you, you're asking if there were, uh, this was on other systems? Yes, this, there was a PC version. Uh, there was PC and 3DO versions. Let's watch the ending. Let's see what would, what you would have gotten if you had chosen number one. Wait, hold on. I'm sorry, I think that's the wrong one. I think what we want is this. All right, go for the nav consoles. I'll cover you. Wait, Zach, don't shoot it. It's unarmed. We gotta try and communicate. How? Come on, this thing isn't exactly happy to see us, Aerie. Actually, no, that's not it. I'm sorry. I'm getting them mixed up. Shit, he sees us. This right, is the, the one. Nav consoles. I'll cover you. Wait, Zach, okay, don't if you pick it. number one, this is what you would have gotten. Communicate. How? Come on, this thing isn't exactly happy to see us, Aerie. Casey, try to communicate with it. Lo What's it doing? Some kind of field. The temperature's dropping. All right, Casey. What's wrong with you? Come on, this heat isn't that much. Oh my god, Zach, he's still back on the ship. It's burning! Casey, save yourself! Casey, no! Okay, and that's what would have happened if you would have picked number one. For some reason, the symbol that we would have sent in that case would have had the alien create a force field around the control room, which saves Zack and Ari. But remember, Casey's brain is still in a box back on the ship, which is outside the shield. So things did not go well for him. All right, so that's what would have happened if we had picked the first set of symbols. But now, what would have happened... If we pick number three, if we took Zack's advice, not tried to communicate and just started shooting, there's a few things that can actually happen, so let's start taking a look at that. Shit, he sees us. All right, go for the nav consoles. I'll cover you. Wait, Zack, don't shoot it. It's unarmed. We gotta try and communicate. How? Come on, this thing isn't exactly happy to see us, Aerie. Casey, try to communicate with it. Lower your weapon, Zack. Show it we mean no harm. Area didn't work. Get to those consoles. Zack! God, come down. Jesus. Zack! Oh. Ah. Zack! Casey, do something! Casey! Casey! 
So you might have no- might have noticed that Casey did not actually shoot the alien. Casey stood by as uh, as just an observer in that one. And in that one, things don't go well for Ari and Zach. Well, they do start shooting first. But what would have happened if we actually did start shooting and tried to help out Ari and Zach against the alien? Well, here's what happens. All right. So it looks like that the chat is freezing. So I'm sorry, the stream is freezing. So by extension, the chat is watching that frozen stream. Once again, let's try watching the ending where we decide to join in and shoot at the alien pilot. And hopefully it'll work this time. Area it didn't work. Get to those consoles. And that's what would have happened if we decided not to communicate with the alien pilot and shot him in the back of the head. But you might have noticed something. Um, during that ending, Arius tells us to use the alien nav console. Now, this is a thing that kind of puzzled me for a while because none of our data uh, that we have can do anything with the nav console. As it turns out, if we want to use that, we have to do something that's not exactly obvious. So let's look at that. What has to happen is back when we first enter the room, we see the alien pilot using the nav console. What we have to do is use our analyze on that, right? Yeah, when we fly over. See that? Yeah, could be our navigational console. Think this guy will mind if we hijack his ship? Let's see what Casey comes up with. Yeah, that's our cue. When Ari says, let's see what Casey comes up with, we want to use analyze, and we get this. It's not the most obvious thing, because the game does go on if you don't do this, as you saw. So this is kind of a secret, I think. Oh, shit, he sees us. All right, go for the nav consoles. I'll cover you. Wait, Zach, don't shoot it. It's on. Yeah, let's just fast forward that. We've already seen it. Okay, we can actually tighten the light beams now, because we have a new thing entered in our data. It's not working! Okay, I'm gonna set the weapon on overload. Eat this! <laughs> we did it! Hurry and work those controls, Casey, we're almost out of time! Okay, so what we have to do now is now that we know how to use the nav console, we fly over to this holographic projection of the sun and a planet that's orbiting around it, and we're presented with the final puzzle of the game. The secret puzzle, I guess, because this is the only time we get this. What is this puzzle? Okay, so you can see the sun. We don't want to fly into that. You can see the planet on the left. We don't want to fly into that because we'd crash. So we have to make a path from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen. It doesn't tell us that's what we want to do. You have to just guess at that. So I'm trying to make a path, and you might notice, as I'm doing this, that sometimes it resets. Why does that reset? 
Well, can you figure it out? All of the clues given as to why that might reset have already been given to you. Some of the colored shapes are the right ones, as we're making this path, and some of the colored shapes are the wrong ones. What determines what? Well, I had to figure this out, so why don't you try to figure it out right now, as you watch me stumble around trying to do this puzzle. Just look at the colored shapes and try to figure out, is there a reasoning behind why some of them would be the right ones and why sometimes the whole thing just resets? Why would that even happen? By the way, there is a time limit to this puzzle. If the planet reaches the top of the screen, uh, we get a game over. There's no video clip or anything. Uh, it just goes back to the title screen. Can you do this without killing the alien? No! This is a unique puzzle. You only get it if you do this path. The symbols on the door? No. Make a rainbow? No. Uh, there's no external information from the game that's needed here. All of the hints are right on the screen. Roy G. Biv? You're getting close. What would Roy G. Biv have to do with this? There is no reason? No, there's a reason. And as you can see, I'm panicking at this point, because I've made it so far, and I'm trying to work out what could possibly be the symbols to make it to the end of the path. You see, this is not the first time I was doing it. I was doing this over and over for a while, without really realizing uh, just what it was that I had to do. I got this far by trial and error, you see. Oh, I'm almost there. I'm almost at the top. Just a little bit more? And no, it resets. Okay. I believe at this point I then charted a course into the sun out of frustration. Yes, I did. And we get a game over. Okay, so now what we're going to look at is the actual solution. So, how do you solve this puzzle? Bear Jazz, you said complementary colors. That's one part of it. When you're on a symbol... There are three colors you can go to, uh, the two adjacent colors and the one complementary color. I think it's called adjacent colors. So say, for example, if you're on red, you can go to uh, purple, you can go to orange, the adjacent colors, or you could go to the complementary color of red, which is green. Those are the three colors you can go to. You cannot go to blue or yellow or else, else it resets. So that's the solution. Um, once you know that, it's not very difficult, but you do have that time limit. Um, but yeah, you just have to figure that out on your own. There are no actual clues as far as I can tell. This is just something you have to think about a color wheel to figure out. Oh, I'm getting so close to that sun. Now, why would the alien nav console work this way? I don't know, but it does. And we are almost at the top. And there we go. And so we get the Zack death ending, which I think is probably going to be the chat's favorite ending once they see it. Be in a few seconds, I think. Yep, there it is. 
So yes, that's I think is the hardest ending to get to because you have to analyze that nav console, which like I said is not the most obvious thing. And then you have to solve that puzzle. Um, which is kind of, it's kind of odd because that that's a unique puzzle. You don't get it anywhere else. And being that this was the hardest ending to get, it kind of makes me think that the Zack death ending is the true ending of Daedalus Encounter. Of course, our canon ending was the happy one where everyone survives, because that's what the chat picked. Though, to be, uh, to be fair, it would not have been possible to pick this one, because you have to do those other things to get it. So in this ending, Casey and Ari survive, Zack dies, and uh, we kill the alien messiah. But we take the Daedalus for ourselves. That ship is ours. So if you look at it from the perspective of salvagers, it's not a bad ending. We do have an entire alien uh, galaxy ship, starship, to fly around in, as opposed to our little Artemis ship, so... That's something, right? Of course, we can assume that the alien messiah was going to bring peace to the universe, and we stop that, uh, so... But anyway, that was the final ending of the Daedalus Encounter. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Like I said, I enjoyed playing through it, though there were some frustrating parts. And, uh, I just think it's a pretty good example of an FMV game from the time that was pretty well made, pretty well filmed, and overall was a fairly good puzzle game, as opposed to a lot of the other FMV games from the time. So I hope you enjoyed watching the Daedalus Encounter. This offering available on Panasonic's 3DO Interactive Multiplayer and also for PC. We'll be back in a few minutes with some Virtue's Last Reward. See you then.